Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Shahzad Muntaz and I'm a health data scientist from Health Informatics Center of University of Dundee. So my talk is about standardizing the process of disease definitions to share and reuse an epidemiological studies at scale. Uh, this, talk, uh, this talk covers uh, two projects we have worked on over the last uh, couple of years. And uh, the first one is the development of the HDR UK Phenotype Library, which was a collaborative project across seven institutes uh, across the UK, uh, which, in, uh, which includes uh, University College London, King's College London, and uh, European Bioinformatics Institute, uh, University of uh, Oxford, University of Birmingham, and it includes Swansea University as well, one of the key partners, and University of Dundee from where I belong to. The second component is the multimorbidity informatics tool, which was a collaborative project between uh, University of Dundee and University of Edinburgh. So the first component I'll be talking about is the phenotyping. What the phenotypes are, who the typical users of phenotypes are, are and what existing resources are available and what is the major challenge which uh, uh, clinical uh, epidemiologists or researchers face while using the existing phenotype libraries. And then why we came up with the idea of developing a HDR UK phenotype library to address such problems. And the next uh, component is the multimorbidity informatics tool, which uh, is, which was actually, uh, the aim of this project was to develop uh, an informatics tool to be used by the clinical guideline developers to help them streamline and speed, uh, speedy process to uh, conduct uh, analysis based on the clinical data. So then I'll talk about key features and lessons learned. The first of all, what is phenotyping? Disease definitions or conditions, also known as phenotyping, is a critical step in extracting cohort of patients for epidemiological studies. Phenotyping is known as a mechanism that enables researchers to extract phenotype to extract phenotypes from complex and messy data generated during routine interaction within the clinical healthcare systems. Typical examples of phenotype can be disease diagnostics and disease diagnostics, for example, type 2, type two diabetes or abdominal hernia, they are not recorded as type 2 diabetes or abdominal hernia in the uh, clinical system. Rather, they are stored as different clinical coding systems, which involves ICD-10 or read codes or SNOVED CT or some other codes as well or it can be a blood pressure measurements. Uh, a typical example of phenotype can be a list of clinical codes, or it can be a more complex scenario where you need to extract some information using NLP techniques from the uh, patient notes, or it can be from based on the uh, machine learning trained classifiers. So who are the typical users of the phenotypes? Clinicians are often interested to see based on the clinical data, what treatment is best recommended for their patients, given those phenotype definitions. So they would like to see the historical trends within the data. And the second would be guideline developers. Guideline developers typically, when they develop guidelines, they rely on uh, clinical trials which are published and as evidence to develop some guidelines, whereas uh, often they find it very difficult to get some informed decision based on the clinical data. So, and the starting point for the guideline developers will be to use phenotype defini definitions as a starting point to extract a cohort of patients to conduct epidemiological studies and get some uh, information about the data which they can use to make some decisions. And the next is the researchers, which actually creates some new phenotypes and uh, which also use some existing phenotypes as well. So, prior to these, uh, like, Initially, the researchers were actually developing their own phenotypes. They were getting it published as supplementary materials, and which was finding it, which was very difficult for the new researchers or who are interested in the same disease condition, or maybe get uh, want, want to use like compare different phenotype definitions which are available across the world for the same condition. So it was very difficult, like uh, figuring out from the literature which phenotypes are available in which papers and all that. So over the last one decade, some phenotype resources have been developed and they have actually put their phenotypes on their uh, dedicated websites which they have, they have actually uh, developed only to publish their own phenotypes. However, there was a need to do kind of uh, in, improve the processes to in, use those phenotypes directly in their analysis. So far, whatever the phenotype resources are available, they are not directly usable within their uh, analysis pipelines. 
So the objective, one of the key objective of the HDR UK phenotype library was to not only collate phenotypes developed across the world as a sing, at, at a single repository, but allow users to use phenotypes available within the library directly in their analysis. So after analysis of existing phenotype libraries and having discussions with uh, lots of different research groups, we came up like uh, in terms of like requirement gathering process, we came up with some idea of like, what should we do at start? Let's see what should uh, researchers should uh, expect from the phenotype library. So based on that, we came up with some Desiderata and that Desiderata was published in, one, uh, in the Giga Science uh, Journal. And that Desiderata focuses on five different aspects, like authoring phenotypes, then refining them, and then implementing in terms of implementation, then validation and publishing. And following these Desiderata and discussions with researchers, the aim of the HDR UK phenotype library was to uh, develop an open access library of definitions of diseases and health conditions with the capability of providing more consistent definitions, supporting tools and methods to, to find, author, reuse, and validate existing definitions, and uh, to support computable phenotype definitions as well. And the next bit is like to not only support phenotype definitions coming from the clinical codes, like from the structured data, but also from the NLP-based phenotype definition and also the image-based phenotype definition. So far, whatever we have actually in the phenotype in the HDR UK phenotype library is mainly based on the structured data, but we are looking forward to collaborate with some groups to extract some NLP-based phenotypes as well as some uh, image-based phenotypes as well. So to start with, uh, This is a web-based, uh, web-based, uh, Python-based. Uh, web, we have used Python-based web framework Django for developing a uh, HDR UK phenotype library. And before like, de starting to develop, based on the Desiderata, we actually agreed upon what should be represented in each of the phenotypes. So that was a bit challenging. Different user groups, when they were publishing their phenotypes on their websites or maybe as a supplementary material, there was no standardization of that. So we came up with some sort of standardized metadata. Uh, uh, metadata, and then we decided to populate that from the existing libraries. The first thing we actually populated our HDR UK phenotype library was from the one of the very well-known uh, phenotype resource, which was developed at University College London from one of our collaborators. And the other one was from University of Manchester, which is called uh, Clinical Codes Repository. And we also worked with uh, different organizations which involve HDR UK research data hubs and uh, to get their uh, phenotype definition in the library as well in the standardized format. The phenotype library has two-way communication with the gateway. Because in phenotype definitions, you just have some metadata and the clinical codes or the uh, or the algorithm or its computational form. But what data has been used? What is the info where is the information about the data? On each phenotype page, there is a field in the metadata called data source, which allows you to jump to the HDR UK gateway to see the details about the data set, data set used for that particular phenotype. Similarly, on the gateway, uh, there is a section for against each data set where you have like list of phenotypes where you can click on and jump to this website to see oh, what the definition is actually, which has actually used uh, this particular data set. And similarly, our colleagues from uh, King's College London, they have developed a PhenoFlow, which is a computational phenotype uh, framework. So that computational phenotype uh, is also available from within the library in, in, as part of the metadata. So, so far we have more than 1000 phenotypes captured across different, uh, more than 40 data sources. And uh, we have already submitted a paper about this uh, to Jamia Open. So to allow users on different uh, users to access phenotypes, to find author or submit new phenotypes, we have uh, the phenotype library supports API. And okay, API is normally returns your data in XML or some other sort of forms. But the users are, are, are often interested to use the, those phenotypes directly in their R analysis or maybe in Python. So we have developed an API client R package for the phenotype library as well. So uh, whereas the uh, Python package is still in progress, and we also have a, a web interface to upload phenotypes as well. So far, you can find and download them. But we have also uh, like developed web interface, which is under the evaluation process, which will soon be made available. Okay, now, based on the Desiderata, we try to compare where we have reached so far compared to other existing phenotype libraries across which are being developed across the world. 
Following the principles set in the Desi data, we have achieved more than uh, like uh, 11 of the features, partially or fully. We are looking forward to work on three more, uh, three further features, which are, includes support NLP, NLP based or image based phenotypes and supporting tooling that provides connectivity with multiple data standards like OMOP, I2BT, I2B2 or some other standards. And similarly, automate multiple validation techniques. And so far, the impact of this phenotype library has been the intervene project used the phenotype library, which was actually led uh, by the European Bio Bioinformatics Institute to assess the variability of 40 disease endpoints across international prospective biobank cohorts. Similarly, Breath uh, uh, Health Data Research Hub has actually uh, used respiratory disease-based phenotype definitions from the library and compared them and came up with some more uh, well curated phenotypes and they have some they have they are available uh, within the hdr uk phenotype library similarly adp adolescent mental health data platform which is based at here at swansea they have also uh, are they are also active users of the library and they are uh, submitting their own phenotypes and they are using those phenotypes in their analysis directly and the next component of my uh, talk is uh, about multimorbidity informatics tool which was developed at university of dundee in collaboration with the university of edinburgh the Objective of this tool was to uh, uh, to use phenotype definitions from the library to develop an informatics, informatics tool to study underlying populations for more than 100 disease conditions and to understand the clinical trial eligible and ineligible, ineligible populations. The tool was developed for use by the National Institute for Care and Excellence uh, and Scottish Intercollegiate Guideline Network. This was a proof of concept tool. So, the project about uh, developing the multimorbidity informatics tool, there was like two step process. In the first step, we worked with the guideline developer groups to understand their requirements and conducted some analysis for them, like the, the traditional analysis. In parallel, we tried to develop an informatics tool, uh, which they can use across many conditions. So we consulted with NICE and uh, SIGN, in, in order to understand what evidence would be useful as part of the guideline development process and what data set would be used uh, for a proof of concept R shiny application. So the analysis we agreed uh, upon with the uh, guideline developers ba was based on two types of analysis. One is the overall population for a condition, which involves demogra demographic distributions across different age groups or different ethnicities or different genders or um, indices of multiple deprivations or by setting an inclusion and exclusion criteria, there was an option, like they were also interested to see trial eligible and ineligible populations. So this tool actually uses uh, definitions from the HDR UK phenotype library, which were in recorded in read code version two. And we used the CPRD uh, gold data extract uh, of uh, 1.1 million patients. And for both types of analysis, there was a standard output generation and there was user specified outputs. When I say standard output generation, the tool automatically does that analysis and creates multiple tabs of those outputs. When user specified outputs, it allows users to select uh, comorbidities of interest. It allows users to select uh, prescriptions of interest, like which drugs have been used. And similarly, for a given condition, a user sets an inclusion and exclusion criteria to see file eligible and ineligible populations. And all outputs presented in terms of trial eligible and ineligible populations. Next is like the tool supports 128 conditions as in index conditions and 161 conditions to be used as comorbidities. So the disease conditions are represented as different hierarchical levels and the selection of index condition is only allowed as the individual condition level. Whereas the comorbidity selection is supported at different granularity levels of individual conditions, which combines the condition groups and then the body system and so on. And similarly, the hierarchical groupings are uh, available for the prescriptions as well. And the tool was, because it uses the sensitive data, so it was uh, deployed within the uh, HIC uh, Health Informatics Center, TRE. And the interesting bit is like CPRD Gold has like one of the table was called clinical table, has 254 million records. To speed up the process, we actually designed and optimized data structures to extract only the information which is needed for the analysis. So it's an R-Shiny application. 
It was evaluated by guideline developers from NICE and SIGN. And an app ensures disclosure control by rounding numbers to 10 and percentage to, percentages to uh, uh, discrete numbers. So the egressing of the outputs from the uh, secure environment should be made more faster. And it has, so far, it has very limited criteria to set inclusion and exclusion criteria. And next is, this is like, a tool has like, the left part represents where you have a uh, option of selection of uh, which type of analysis you want to perform. And on the right, you can, from the drop down list, you can just select gout. But actually in the clinical data, it's not regarded as gout. Rather, it's a combination of lots of different codes in read code version two. So which, which are actually came from, which are coming from the HDR UK phenotype library. And the output here represents like uh, 13 different tabs, which have different types of analysis. I've just given here some example outcomes. And these are some example uh, outcomes based on the demographic analysis, analysis, different age groupings and different ethnicity groupings and in, the numbers are rounded. And similarly, in terms of top five comorbidities, you can see these are just uh, examples here. And every, we were looking into these numbers because the researchers who are working for guideline developers, they are interested more in tables and numbers, not in graphs. For that reason, we actually came up with these numbers. So uh, because being from a background from computer science, we often think, oh, why not graphs? Why not tables? But they, they, were, they are used to with these numbers. So it was their requirement to get these numbers and make some guidelines. And similarly, uh, user selected options as well. And then the uh, all the outputs are printable because again, that was a requirement from the users. They said, whatever tool generates, we need to get it as a printed form or as a PDF form. So for that reason, so you can actually select options which uh, tables you want to include in the table. And similarly, for the second component, you can include the inclusion and exclusion criteria. And similarly, you can get some outputs from that as well. So when the nice guideline users use this tool and they say, oh, that, that fits according to what our strategy is to make up the process speed up. Because what typically happens when they are developing guidelines, people come to them and they contact researchers who are working in the same domain. And it takes three months to six months to conduct analysis of a single condition. Whereas this tool allow them to select a condition from the drop down list and gives the analysis within a couple of minutes with lots of lots of tables where they can make some guidelines about it. So that was the like uh, interesting part of this tool. So the key features lens, HER UK Library, the aim was to make it fair, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable, and to present standardized phenotype definitions and to save times for epidemiologists or health informaticians to reuse existing phenotype definitions. An example proof of concept, our shiny tool has demonstrated the value of standardized definitions and analysis pipeline being usable across many conditions, which otherwise often takes months for a single condition. And conclusion is HDR UK Phenotype Library has more than 1,000 phenotypes. Uh, as of now, one, of, one third of the phenotypes are in computable form and it supports REST API to integrate with other tools which people are developing. And similarly, multimorbidity informatics tools so far works with the CPRD only, and it has support of 120, 28 conditions as index conditions and 161 conditions as uh, comorbidities. And similarly, an optimized data structure support faster analysis compared to the raw CPRD go data extract. Uh, can be extended to other conditions within the HDR UK phenotype library, and it can be extended to other data sources as well. But it definitely, uh, that would be the next phase because this was a proof of concept tool. So HDR UK has like, a, uh, QQ2, where we are trying to combine these both of the projects in a way with, to make them usable, not only for researchers, but for clinicians, as well as for guideline developers. Any questions, please? Thanks. Um, the first question by Richard is, if you search the HD Rock, HDR UK, uh, HDR UK gateway for common conditions, you will get more than five similar matches, which makes it time consuming to select the appropriate one. This problem will get worse over time as people create their own and more get uploaded. Are there any plans to develop tools to alleviate this problem? Yes. Uh, the, one of the problem in phenotype definitions is people are developing, like even clinicians don't agree with the similar definitions within them. Like one says, oh, this set of codes is good enough for defining this condition. 
maybe to answer that specific question, what they are looking for. The other group says like, this definition is more suitable and we should input these set of codes. We have, right now we are, we have no control. Like we don't want to like control or monitor this website. We want people to submit the phenotype definitions as long, as much as they can. At some point, definitely uh, the definitions which are, which have some well recognized publication associated with it. You can filter it by yourself, the users, or the tool will facilitate and uh, like we have like things in plan in, in planning to compare different phenotype definitions. So you can like choose whichever you want to use and which makes sense to your analysis or maybe your, your questions. Thank you. Um, the next question, um, could you, oops, jumped. Could you summarize lessons about working with researchers rather than what you built for them? Yes, that's a very interesting thing because as I mentioned earlier on, they were more happy with numbers, whereas I was more happy with graphs. So with some, some visualization where I, can, I could interpret them more easily, but they were more interested in all those different tabs with those numbers. They say they make more sense to us because we've been used to these numbers. So that was like, okay, we, we, we need to like fulfill their requirements. And if you see any like uh, epidemiological studies paper, whatever the outputs we have agreed on in most of the uh, like research publication, they use these numbers more often than any graphs, these tables as supplementary material or as a main body content. Content. So we have to actually work with them to make them things work workable. Thank you. Um, I think when we are quick, we can do the next two questions. When ingesting data, how do you determine when they are actually different and when they should be merged? So, when ingesting data, how do you determine when they are actually different and when they should be merged? merged? In, in, in our cases, we haven't like come across with this because for the multimorbidity informatics too, we have just worked with the CPRD. But like CPRD has also two components. One is CPRD Aurum, one is CPRD Gold. So, and they both require some sort of standardized form where you can extract those, those information and make them like in a single database. So we haven't worked on that angle yet, but I think uh, once we extend these things to other data sets, it will be interesting. Thank you. And the last question, which is very broad. How helpful do you think high performance computing can be for health and clinical research? Yeah, like as I said, uh, CPRD gold extract, what we have used has just 1.18 million patient records. And one of the routine interactions within the like clinical data, clinical data table, 250 more, 4 million records were there. When you scale it to like 60, 70 million people, definitely uh, mm -hmm. it, it will require some optimized data structures, but it will also require some high performance computing to make, to support the processes more faster or getting results more faster. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Let's